speaker. I want to commend the Ministry of Health and, of course, our colleagues, the Select Committee on Health, for they have been really working very hard since uh, the virus issues have started. I am in support of the 45 days because I think the 90 days is a little bit on the high side. And uh, I am not convinced by the position of government to say that uh, the 90 days will give them time to plan. Because uh, I remember in our last sitting in December, we had this issue here. From, from December to now, it's already three months. So if government had not planned from December to now, I don't know how much time would they want us for us to give them to plan for the next three months again. So maybe that it will take them six good months just to plan. So I really think, in my honest opinion, um, it is not a serious move. And uh, obviously, the proclamations and the regulations are affecting the movement of certain people and it's really seriously affecting the livelihood of certain group of people. Going by the um, Emergency Power Act, Section 32F, I think if government fails to provide remuneration for affected people, then they are violating the very laws that they are supposed to support. So therefore, even with these 45 days, We all know that the cry of the people is the afraid of the three months. Three months was really too scary for Gambians. If I have it my way, you wouldn't even have an emergency, state of emergency. But to compromise, that is, uh, government come halfway, we go halfway, I support the 45 days um, proposal by the government, uh, by the committee on human rights and constitutional matters. Madam Speaker, COVID-19 is real. As of yesterday, over a million people are confirmed, confirmed cases. Over a million cases were confirmed. And over 50 people died. So there is no doubt that this is a real thing and it is killing. Therefore, to have a government who is really not proactive is very, very uh, disappointing. Madam Speaker, yes, in the Gambia we are saying that we had four cases. That is true, but for me that is not the real picture. It is not the real picture because how many people were tested? During the period, I think for the past three days, it was 98 people who were tested. Out of that 98, we had a result of four. And we have 1.2 million Gambians. So the four cases is really not the real picture. We we may or we may even have more as we speak. And because those cases are not detected, the infection is going on. Therefore, I would like to ask a few questions for the ministry to answer if they are intervening. How many testing centers do we have now? And where are these testing centers located? I would also want the Minister of Health to tell us how many treatment centers are also available? Because it is from the testing that you'll be able to determine that somebody is suspected. So if we have only tested 98 and we have four results, fine, good news. Two are released, one is still there. But how many more are carrying the virus? We don't know. That's very scary. So we really don't have any room of complacent. I think we need to spend the monies into getting the right equipment so that proper testings and frequent testings can be done, then we will know a real status. In the US, that is what will happen. At the beginning, there were, the, the United States, we are not testing as many people as they can. 
But when the testing really increase, their numbers increase. So we are really sitting on the timing bomb. Madam Speaker, I also want to urge the government to be very judicious in the way they, are spend, they, they will or they are spending funds that are here to fight COVID-19. We know government has put aside $500 million. As of yesterday, the World Bank has approved um, another $10 million, and more will come. So therefore, we are not left by ourselves, and we are not left by the international community. But then, those monies should be judiciously spent and transparently spent. Therefore, I will urge honorable members of this House, the civil society organizations, the media, to put their eyes on these monies and monitor them very well. And I will also urge even people who are within the spending committees of government to serve as whistleblowers should there be any element of corruption. Should there be any element of diversion of funds into other uh, sectors that it is not meant for? These monies are meant to save us. So we all have to be very honest in the way we are going to spend this money. Madam Speaker, I will want to conclude because uh, a lot has been said and there is no point repeating one another. But I want to call on the, I want to call the attention of uh, the government not to use the state of emergency and tamper with the press freedom of this country. And we should know that we need the media now than ever. Because many speakers here have said we need sensitization. You cannot do sensitization without using the media. So therefore, I call on the government to be very careful not to tamper with the press freedom in this country and allow the journalists to do their work professionally. And I will not also conclude without also saying that the media or the people in the um, journalism fraternity or the journalism fraternity should also use their mediums professionally and give more airtime and space to sensitization because COVID-19 is really real. Thank you.